Good morning, everybody. I wanted to give you a quick update on our board and train Tangi down there. And uh, we he is doing awesome. He is about, let's see, this is day nine of his board and train. And he is doing awesome. And I want you guys to see what structure and tools used in the right way leads to. So when we first got Tangi, the first thing we did was we worked on just his daily structure of life. And what that looks like is something that I picked up along the way called groundwork. And I've made some other videos on it, but basically what it is is you're telling the dog, this is when you rest, this is when you go outside, this is when you go to the bathroom, this is when you can play, this is when you can eat, and it's very structured. And if you want to think of it, it's kind of like a boot camp. Um, some of you know I'm in the Air Force, and before you do your job in the Air Force, you go away to basic training, and it's, it's that same type of setup. You're very structured, so you learn what the rules are for that organization. So we do the same thing with our dogs. We bring a new dog in and we say, hey, here's the rules in this house. And then we start coupling that with consistent obedience training. And that first started with Tangi was how to walk nicely on a leash and how to heal next to me. So here's what's cool about all that stuff. Come on, Tangi man. Come on, Tangi. Yeah, good job. So we literally right now, we're on a break. And if you can see down there, he's just staying with me, right? Cause he's learned, oh, this guy I stay with and I have to listen to. So even though I'm like, hey, you're on a break go smell grass do what you want he wants to stay with the person that he knows is his leader the one giving him direction so this is just a byproduct of doing that training so anyway i'm getting ahead of myself so we did some whew, my arm's getting tired here we go switching arms um so then we started doing heel training and we started doing heel training with just a flat collar and um, in a long line. And it was really just getting the dog to understand that you stay with me. So I have a 33 foot line and I come out here in my backyard, but you can do it, you know, in a parking lot or you can do it anywhere and you just do change of directions. So I start heading one way I turn around, I turn back the other way, and if the dog keeps going forward and is like, I want to go do what I want to do, when they get to the end of that long line, I give them a little pop with the line, and I just keep walking the other direction. I don't really say anything, it's just a pop, and I'm going this way. And what that does is it teaches the dog to stay with me. Then we go from that, we go to a six foot regular leash and we do the same principle I tell him to heal now I give him a command to heal to start pairing with that and I start going one direction I turn around if he gets the end of the, the leash and he doesn't stay with me he gets a little pop and that's all that it is for the first stage you're just changing directions it's very dizzying for us but it, it teaches the dog, hey, stay with me. It's kind of like every time that happens, we're just kind of tapping them on the shoulder. Hey, stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. Then after that, we start incorporating changes of direction. Um, well, I'm sorry, I just said change of direction. Then we start doing uh, changes of pace. So I will speed up and then I'll slow down and the dog has to stay next to me. And every time he passes one of these tests all along, we are rewarding the dog. So I use, I use food. I have a tree pouch on me and I use food. And I just, every time he passes a test, I'm like, yes, here's treats, good job. 
So we are using positive reinforcement to say, you're doing great. And then we're using positive punishment when he's not doing great and he fails on a test with our corrections. Um, and this is how dogs understand. This is the language they speak. Um, so after we do that, then we start doing lane changes where I'm going this way as I'm walking right now, and then I'm going to change directions, go this way, see how Tangi stayed right with me? That's a lane change. So now I can turn around and go this way, and Tangi's with me. I can change lanes, and Tangi is with me, right? I can speed up, and he stays with me. I can slow down like a little old man. And he stays with me. Good job, Tangie. What a good boy. He's probably like, what in the world? We're just walking around in circles out here. Um, so these are all things that we do to teach the dog leash manners. Um, then from that stage, once they start understanding these things, we start incorporating different tools so that we can reaffirm what's good and reaffirm what we don't want. So I'm going to go from a flat collar to a chain and then from a chain to a prong collar and then from a prong collar to an e-collar. This is the last step. This is never step one or two. This is the last step. Okay. And we're just layering those things in. So the tool itself doesn't fix the dog it's the handler and knowing how properly to use the tool to administer those corrections when they need to and I think that's a big mistake I've made in my own dog travels and I think just a lot of owners make in general my dog's out of control I need the highest level tool to get them to behave and we don't think about do they know what they need to do um, and they're just not doing it, which is normally that's what the case is. They don't know what's expected of them. And then we slap a tool on them and we want the tool to teach them everything that we should have taught them. And that's just not fair to the dog. And then the tools get a bad name because we didn't use them right. Right. So, um, I just wanted to give you, there's so much more I could say on this. We could probably have a whole podcast. Maybe I'll do a podcast. Who knows? Um, but these are just some of the things that I do with my board and train dogs um, that work really well. So like I said, this is day nine with Tangi and he's, he's doing great. He's staying with me. Good job, buddy. Um, we're hanging out. He's having fun. He's enjoying time with the other dogs. Um, and this is all because we layer our training and we're patient and we use the right tools at the right time and we get a gauge on where the dog is at. What does he know obedience wise? Um, Tangi was basically what we call a green dog. So didn't really know anything. Didn't know what was expected of him. So we took him from, you know, preschool and now he's doing awesome. So uh, I'd say he's in junior high right now. So we still gotta work on some distractions. Um, that'll be the next layer. Now he knows what's expected of him. He knows what he needs to do. And now we have to start layering in those, those distractions to say, even when this happens, fill in the blank, you have to do what you're expected to do. Um, and that also just takes a lot of patience. So this is where we start taking the dog out to Home Depot or I took him to the grocery store the other day and did some heel training with people coming and going out the door and shopping carts and making all sorts of racket and having him uh, stay with me throughout those different things so uh, yeah so that's the update Tangi's doing awesome um, yeah so I just wanted to let you know that and kind of give you the overview of uh, what I do here for my training. Um, so if you need training, if you need boarding, 
if you need board and train, which is what Tangie's doing. Hit me up. Let's talk about it. Let's uh, put together a good plan so that you can have a dog who is well behaved, who listens to you, uh, who plays well with others, um, and you can actually enjoy your dog. So happy training and we'll see you next time.